Uh, today's class is titled Consider Yourself. Consider Yourself. All right. Uh, we all have our differences. We got our trials, our tribulations that we go through. Um, and human nature, we like to point the finger. But at the end of the day, who should we point the finger at first? All right. Let's start off with Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. All right, it says fear God and keep his commandments. Read. For this is the whole duty of man. For this is the whole duty of man. When we uh, start thinking outside of that, that's when we get controversy. That's when we get disagreement. That's when we get trials. I'm sorry, we're going to get trials anyway. That's when things get harder and more complicated and we feel bombarded and, and we don't know what to do. But if we keep that at the forefront, things will be a lot simpler. Let's go to Lamentations chapter 3 verse 4. Alright, so it's called Consider Yourself. Consider Yourself. All right, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 4. Who should we look at when problems arise? Read that. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Let us search and try our ways. So the scripture says, let us search and try our ways. So for example, um, say a situation occurred, you had a difference with somebody. Instead of only thinking about what they did, what does the scripture say? Let us search and try our ways. Try our ways. And that should be in anything. You should always look at yourself first to see why do you keep getting the same results? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Read on. And turn again to the Lord. That's the key. It says turn again to the Lord. All right. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, um, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. So we should always turn to the Lord. We should always go to these scriptures to find out how we ought to think. Because every last one of us in this room, for the most part, we didn't grow up in Israelite. We had to come to the knowledge of who we really were. So we are going to have those, you know, those thought processes, um, those times when we get out the spirit or we do not think according to the Bible. But the scripture says, turn again to the Lord. All right. Knowing that, let's go to Genesis 8 and 21. Genesis 8 and 21 tells us something very important. Right. Let's read that. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. And the Lord smelled a sweet savior. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Evil from when? Is evil from his youth. So the imagination of a man's heart is evil from his from his youth. So as soon as he comes in, his 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 heart, his mind is already making these evil things. That's so. That's why it's so important, according to Lamentations three and forty, that we do what? We we look at ourselves. We go to the scriptures to find out: Am I thinking the right thing? Is this right? Is this wrong? All right. Now, what type of things are the mind capable of thinking? The brothers, by a show of hands. Which, yeah, just name some things. What type of things do our, do our minds think about, brothers? Brother Shimmy, Shimmy. Lust and thoughts. Lust. Uh, Brother Sammy. Adultery. Uh, Adultery. Uh, what's that? Murder. Murder. Brother Dimmy. Covetousness. Covetousness. Hate. Hate, exactly. Stealing. Stealing. All right. Well, Brother Noah. Idolatry. Idolatry. All right, idolatry. Now, where can we find that? Y'all brothers hit it on the head. What scripture tells us that our mind is capable of all these things? Brother Samuel. Mark 7, 21. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. All praise. Let's go to it. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. All right. This shows us what the mind is capable of. All right. Let's read that. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, 
adultery, fornication, murder, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eyes. No, what does that say? An evil eye. Uh, who can tell me what that means? What is an evil eye? My show of hands. Brother Athia, stand up. Eyes, like looking at somebody harsh, like, um, oh, I can't stand it. Like that. Exactly. An evil eye. Read on. Blasphemy. Pride. Uh huh. Foolishness. Read. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. All right. So just like it said in Genesis 8 and 21, that uh, that a man says his mind was going to be evil from his youth. That's what it's going into. All right, showing you that that's the things that every last one of us deal with on a daily basis, right? All right, from there, let's go to Jeremiah 17 and 9. All right, knowing, knowing that that's what we have to deal with, all right, how are we to combat this? All right, are we just supposed to let, like, let this happen and not even try to deal with it? All right, let's see what the Bible says. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Mm -hmm. Who can know it? It says, who can know it? All right, the scripture says that the heart is desperately wicked above, above all things. It's deceitful. All right. How does it deceive you? It tells you that lust is a good thing. It tells you that when you see that woman or when you see that wallet, you should take it because it belongs to you, all right? This is your chance to get the money that you needed, all right? That's how your mind will do things to you. But the scripture told you that, all right? That's, that's the, that's the um, advantage that we have as Israelites. The scriptures tell us how to deal with it. It says don't trust in your mind, all right? So just remember that the class is called consider yourself. So when you feel a certain way, does that, does that feeling align up with the scriptures? Can you go to the scriptures and support your feelings? That's that's what the topic and the um the theme of this class is. All right, let's go to um Second Ezra chapter seven and verse twenty one. All right, these are things that we must do. All right, so we can uh, stay in the spirit, as we always say. All right, make sure we examine ourselves at all times. Am I am I keeping the laws? Am I doing what the scriptures say? The way I feel right now is that lining up with the scriptures? Give me that. <laughs> Second Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 21. Uh-huh. For God have given straight command uh -huh. to such as came, what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. So the scripture says that God gave a straight commandment, right? So giving to you straight means <clears throat> not beating around the bush. All right? He told us what to do to live, and he told us what to do um, to get judgment, to get, to get death, all right? Anything outside of that, we make it very difficult. Read on. Verse 22. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him. So he gave a straight commandment, but nevertheless, because man was evil from the youth, right? Just like Genesis 8, 21 said. Read on. But spake against them. Uh-huh. And imagine... Vain things. And imagine vain things. But I thought we just read in Jeremiah 17 and 9 that the heart is deceitful. Y'all see that? How the most high God, he'll give a straight commandment. It's straight. But what happens? We start thinking. We start thinking about, well, I don't know if that fits me. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I can change. No. Let's read it again from the top. Verse 21. Verse 21. But God had given straight command mm -hmm. to such as Cain. What they should do to live, even as they came. And what they should observe to avoid punishment. To avoid punishment. We know that the wages of sin is what, brothers? Yeah. All right. So if the law says, thou shalt not covet, what should we do? Yeah. Not covet, right? But is it that easy? Does that, is that how it goes for the most part? What, what happens? Let's read verse 22 again. Verse 22. <laughs> Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him. That's why we're in captivity right now. That's why we're here, because we were not obedient unto the Most High. Read. But spake against him, and imagine vain things. And imagine vain things. Read on. And deceived themselves by their wicked deeds. And did what? And deceived themselves. By their wicked deeds. And deceive themselves by their wicked deeds. 
All right, we deceive our own self. For example, let me, uh, what is that? And uh, let's go to answers. Uh, what is that? You know, is it 16? Let me look at it. 16 and verse 63. Yeah, 16 and verse 63. So, for example, it said, we, we deceive our own selves by our own wicked deeds, right? But who, who are, who, are we fooling the most high? When the most high tells us to do something, we go around, you know, make it, you know, it's really not that bad if I do it like this. Who are we fooling? We're fooling ourselves, but is, is the most high fooled at all by that, brothers? Watch this, watch this. Second Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 63. Uh-huh. Surely he knoweth your invention. Read. And what ye think in your heart. Uh-huh. Even them that sin and would hide their sin. And would hide their sin. Read on. Therefore, have the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. The Most High will put all of us to shame if we go about it like that. Let's go back to Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 23, and we'll, we'll drop that. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. And deceived themselves by their wicked deeds, and set up the Most High, that he is not, and knew not his way. All right, from there, let's go to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2. All right, so remind yourself of the topic, consider yourself. All right, whatever you're going to do, whatever you're going to do, just make sure you're asking yourself, am I, am, am I right right now, according to the scriptures? Not about what you feel, not about what America has taught us, but what the scriptures say. And that's not that easy thing coming out of the world to do. All right? Because first of all, you got to be serious. That's number one. Number two, if you don't know the scriptures, you need to do what? You need to seek out. You, everybody has counselors, right? Those who have been in the truth a little bit longer. So instead of you messing up and making mistakes off of your own ignorance, why not reach out? Am I feeling like this? Should I, should I even be feeling like this? Let me reach out. Let me get some counsel. All right? Let's, um, yeah, let's go to Proverbs 16 and 2. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 2. Uh-huh. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Read that again. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. I bet you, I bet you that is right because in your own eyes, you got, you got your own, um, universal logic or train of thought in your own eyes because you say if somebody, uh, get mad at you, it's like, oh, I don't care, I don't got to talk to that nigga no more, but that's right to you. You feel what I'm saying? I don't gotta deal with this person no more. That's that's cool to you in your head and your mind. All right, but what does the scripture say? If somebody offends you, what are we supposed to do? What's that? You're supposed to chop it up. What scripture you got, bro? You ain't got no scripture. Who can help this brother out? Brothers, brothers, brothers. Who can who can help this brother out? I'm serious, bro. If, if somebody offends you, bro, what you supposed to do? No. No. If somebody offends you, what do you do? Stand up. I want, I want to speak to you, Alright. This is, this is why uh, this is perfect. This is why events happen, and it's something small, and it gets very, very big. Because we don't know how to handle simple situation, all right? Soldiers, soldiers, soldiers. The two soldiers, if, if, if we have an issue with somebody, what are we supposed to do? Matthew Exactly, Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. We're supposed to apply that, all right? If you got an issue, all right, you need to bring it forth, all right? Because the other person may not know. They may be good. They live in their life perfect. But you're over there harping that, and you haven't came to them and applied Matthew 18. All right. Oh, I had a scripture for that, what you just read, Proverbs. Let me read it again. Proverbs 16 and 2. It says, All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, mm -hmm. but the Lord weigheth the Spirit. I right, go to Ecclesiastes 7 and 20. Because it says, All the ways are clean to a man. So if you're clean, you're without sin. So if you think you're without sin, let's see what the Bible says about that. Proverbs 7 and 20. Ecclesiastes 7 20. I'm sorry. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 20. Uh -huh. For there is not a just man. What does it mean to be just, brothers? Alright, 
All right, Ezekiel 18 and 5 says, A just man keeps the laws of God. Ezekiel 18 and 5. Read it again. For there is not a just man a righteous earth. man. A, end of, a righteous man, read, that doeth good. That doeth good, read, and sinneth not. So, that's why what the officer is going over is so important. Because even though we are righteous individuals, y'all brothers who are friends, Lord willing, you don't, you don't cheat on your wife, you have a job, you do all the things you're supposed to do, the scripture says there's not a just man that does not sin. So, what would be the wise thing for you to do? When you, when you think when you think, if you have any instance that you're in the wrong or you're in error, seek the counsel. Consider yourself. All right? Because the scripture says, there's not a just man that sin of not. All right? All right. All right, from there, let's go to, um, back to Proverbs, go to chapter 14 and verse 12. All right? Exactly. It says, um, all the ways of a man is right in his own eyes. It's right in his own eyes. Let's go to Proverbs uh, 14 and 12. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. Uh -huh. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, uh -huh. but the end thereof are the ways of death. For example, for example, Esau says that whatever, it doesn't matter what gender you are, all right, love is love. So anybody should be able to marry whoever they want to marry. All right? They are hard to, you know, they're stuck on the word love. So in their head, right, they think that's right. Love is right. How could love be wrong? All right? But according to the law, is that right, brothers? No. So that seemeth means what? Brothers, uh, who can tell me what the word seemeth means? Hands. Sit up. Seems to be right, it's like, oh, uh, they are depending on your own understanding, like, seem it deceive. Deceive, not exactly, but they do. Like, you all your opinion, like, uh, almost. Almost, yeah, yeah, but it's it's not that. It's an illusion, all right? So, uh, read it again, officer. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The end thereof are the ways of death. Just like the other example. Just because something popped into your head does not mean it's right. Does not mean it's right. So we got to figure out what is right. Brothers, what is right according to the Bible? Y'all should know this. I ask you this all the time. What is right according to the Bible? What you got? Psalm 419, verse 142. No. Brother Othenia. That's righteousness. What is right according to the Bible? Brother uh, Shemua. Proverbs 13 and 14. Proverbs 13 and 14? No. Okay. No. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 17. All right, so we need to find out what God says is right. Because do our opinion and our thoughts, do they mean anything to God, brothers? No, they don't. So we need to find out what is right to God. All right, read that option. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good. Thou shalt do that which is right and good. So what is right, brothers? Right. Keeping God's commandments. All right. So if you don't have it highlighted, what should you do? Highlight it. Circle it. All right. So you can teach your children. So you can teach the next man what is right according to the Bible. All right. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26. All right. The topic is consider yourself. Consider yourself. All right, Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26. Let's Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Is a what? Is a fool. Mm -hmm. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. He shall be delivered. All right, so the man that rejects the Bible, he does not seek counsel, but thinks that what he's feeling 
But he or she thinks that what they're feeling is correct is a fool. So the most High is calling you a fool for thinking that. So brothers, this is advice. Moving on in the future, every last one of you, you're going to go through some trials that's going to test your faith. It's going to happen. Now, the smart thing for you to do is before you make statements out of your mouth, you need to go to the scriptures first. All right? And find out the way I'm feeling. Is this supported by the Bible? Am I wrong right now? Am I right right now? That's what you got to figure out first. Before you speak, before you lash out or anything like that, before your behavior changes, try to control your spirit to go to the scriptures first. All right? Let's read that one more time. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 26. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool, mm -hmm. but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. That he, show, uh, he that walketh wisely shall be delivered. So the man that walketh wisely seeks out counsel. He studies. He's diligent. All right? That's the man that's going to be delivered. He's the one that's going to have mercy granted unto him. All right? Because instead of just reacting out of emotions, he actually held his tongue. All right? He actually calmed down, got the counsel, went to the scriptures. All right? Y'all understand that? All right. Let's go to uh, 1 Samuel 18 and 8. So our forefathers, um, as great as our forefathers were, they dealt with the same things. That's why Romans 15 and 4 is so important. All right? For whatsoever things was written for a four time was written for our learning, all right? Showing that they dealt with the same type of things. Let's read, let's read that, start of verse 8. First Samuel, chapter 18 and verse 8. Uh -huh. And Saul was very wrong, and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed unto David ten thousand. And to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more but the kingdom? All right, so... King Saul was mad because David was getting more play than him. All right, to make a long story short. All right, so he became jealous over King, uh oh, over David at that time. All right, read on. And Saul eyed David from that day forth. He did what? And Saul eyed David. I David, brother Afia. What did uh, Mark seven twenty one say? What was one of the characteristics of the heart? Having an evil eye. Having an evil eye, right? So the forefather, what? Just because he was a great warrior, great forefather, the first king of Israel, right? He still went through the same thing, all right? But his ruin, he didn't, he didn't overcome, all right? He let that be his ruin in, in history, all right? Read that again. And Saul I David from that day forward. Read on. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. And David played with his hand. As at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So, King Saul had so much hatred for uh, young David at the time that he sought to kill him. He sought to take his life on multiple occasions, as you're reading in history. All right, just showing you that the same things we deal with today, these are not new um, emotions or new spirits or new anything. Our forefathers dealt with all of this. All right, from there, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Everybody should know this scripture. All right. And we should do this daily, constantly. You got some options? No, I'm just going to answer, brother. It's important. Who don't say Corinthians 13 and 5? I don't want brother to tell you. Brother Sam, what's say Corinthians 13 and 5? So you know? Nope. Brother Shane, you know what it say? Uh, say. Sure. Brother Othini, you know what it say? I just want to see where y'all at. That's why I think. Oh yeah, also. Y'all gotta watch three classes a week. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a file. You're gonna come back with the title and who was the teacher. And you're gonna give me ten main scriptures that, that, that you got from the class. Y'all gonna get mandatory. Good. Alright. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? So, brothers, if you didn't know the scripture before, y'all need to know the scripture now, except y'all become reprobates, all right? If this is not in you, if you don't know this scripture, that means you're going to fall all the time, all right? Because you can't check your own self. Now, 
Brother Samuel, can you explain the scripture? Yes, sir. Stand up and explain that uh, scripture to the brothers. When it says examine yourself. Speak up. When it says examine yourself, it's saying find out what you're doing right and find out what you're doing wrong. And if, you, if you're doing something wrong, then seek out counsel and get it corrected. Exactly. Exactly. Correct it. That's the key. All right. Examining yourself. If you find fault in yourself, all right, you find iniquity, you find sin. All right, do what you have to do to correct that, whether it be reaching out, whether it be studying more, whether it be not hanging around certain people, all right? First of all, none of us should be chilling with worldly people. If that's a problem, stop doing it, all right? If um, staying up late um, triggers certain spirits, stop doing that. Stay occupied. Do what you have to do, right, to overcome that sin that you're dealing with, all right? All right, from there, let's go to uh, Sirach 18 and 20. Sirach 18 and 20. All right, lining up with the uh, topic, consider yourself. No matter what the situation is, make sure that we are thinking about what we are doing to affect that situation. Sirach, chapter 18 and verse 20. Uh -huh. Before judgment, examine thyself. It says, before judgment, examine thyself. Brother Solomon, what does that mean? Um, examine, examine yourself before judgment. Work out. Make sure you fight off your sins before judgment comes. Mm, nah, not exactly. You want to take your credit, brother? Take it up, take it up. Before you die, you got to go through some more hops. You got to tell them what happened to you. You got to be able to say Nah, that's not what I'm looking for. Brother Afio. Before judgment, so before you uh, before you make a decision to do something, you have to check your spirit and make sure it's in line with the Most High. And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. So when the Most High comes back, you find mercy for all the choices and decisions that you made. You were going by what the scriptures say instead of your own understanding. I like that. I like that answer better. Examine yourself now, all right? Because we know the day of judgment is coming. All right, so in the day of judgment, you can correct your errors. So you will get mercy, all right, because you tried to overcome. Instead of being a reprobate, meaning I want to do things that's right to me. I want to continue doing what's right to me. And then in the day of judgment, you get put to death. All right, let's read that all the way through. Before judgment, examine thyself. And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. Now, I also want to go into, for example, uh, Brother FBL, right? Say someone brings an accusation to you, right? All right, and say, hey, I do want to apply Matthew 18 and 15 because you, I didn't like the way you treated me the other day. Now, instead of just being a nigga and saying, man, I didn't do nothing to that person, stop. Did I do anything to offend this person? All right, be before, before it comes out, don't just, don't just try to come back. You actually need to think, okay, they're coming to me for a reason. They actually sincerely had a, you know, had a serious problem and they wanted to bring it to me to find a solution. I need to do what? I need to look at myself first, right? Before even listening to, you know, thinking about them, oh, they wicked and say, oh, da, 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 da. Look at what you did. You know what? Maybe the way I said it, maybe that was wrong. All right? And then you hear the calls and then y'all work it out. You actually, you know what? I actually was wrong and you apologize, work it out. So it is the same thing. All right? Before, say if we had to correct you. Don't just say, oh, y'all don't know what y'all talking about. Actually examine the matter. What did I do to cause this? All right? That's what that's going into, brothers. Uh, from there. Oh, read, read verse 21. Verse 21. This is how we know it's not talking about when Christ returns. Well, only talking about when Christ returns. Read verse 21. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. Humble thyself before thou be sick. Now, it's key that it said, humble thyself before thou be sick. What happens when you're not humble? What spirit comes on you if you're not humble? Pride. Pride. What does the scripture say about pride? One of the officer's favorite scriptures. Y'all should know this. We don't went over it a lot of times. What, is, what, happens, what happens once the pride comes on you? What does the scripture say? Pride goes what? Pride goes before fall. So read that again, 21. Verse 21. Humble thyself before thou be sick. Uh-huh. And in the time of sin. In the time of your sins. How will you know that you're in the midst of sins? Once you've done what? 
You've examined yourself. You've examined yourself. Read. Show repentance. You see that? You got to be willing to examine yourself, humble yourself, and show repentance. Do y'all get that? It's that simple. But none of that can take place if you don't do what first? The name of the class. You got to consider yourself first for any of that to take place. Because repentance is open. Mm -hmm. Repentance is open. But you got to examine and you got to consider. All right. What do you want? Uh, let's go to um, it says Psalms chapter 4, verse 4. Just like the officer said. All right. Showing signs of repentance, being humble. All right. Before we speak, before we just make those actions. Let's 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 go ahead and just like the scripture says, commune with with your own self. And what am I doing to to um, contribute to this to this matter? What have I done or what have I not done? All right, let's read that. Psalms chapter four and verse four. Psalms chapter four and verse four. Stand it up and sin not. Uh huh. Commune with your own heart. Do what? Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Say lot. Um, Brother Solomon, what does that mean? Uh, stand up and tell us what that means. It says, commune with your own heart. What is that talking about? Not uh, sure? Uh, Brother Sam, you not sure? Who wants to take a stab at that? Read it again for him, officer. Psalm chapter 4, verse 4. Stand it up and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Say lot. Brother Chris, you're there, though. Hey, can you, like, take the time to get along, think about your actions, and meditate on the scriptures, and match yourself up to the scriptures? All right, I'll take that. It says match yourself up, align your, align your thinking with what the Most High is saying. All right, it says commune with your own heart according to these scriptures. So if you got to take a moment out, all right, if you can't speak right now, you need to go, you know, walk away, get some time, that's fine. Go commune with your heart. Make sure that the way you're feeling matches up with the scriptures. And if it's not, correct yourself. That's the key thing. That's what's going to keep a lot of people in the truth. And that's the reason why a lot of people are going to fall out of the truth. Because you can't correct your own self. All right? Because that's like Philippians 2 and 12 says. It's, it's not in front of the, uh, everybody else's eyes. It's about what happens behind closed doors. Can you correct yourself according to the scriptures when nobody else is looking? Can you say, I know the scripture says this, but nobody's looking right now, so I just want to do what I want to do right now? That's 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 why this class is coming out. Consider yourself. All right, what's what is wrong with me? What what issues do I have? Why can't I overcome this? Why can't I overcome that? Y'all understand that? All right, hold on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Because I think I know what they, they, they didn't want to explain. Who knows what commune means? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anybody know what it means to commune? It's it's what's the uh, what's the it's the uh, the root word of communication. All right. So if you commune, what are you doing? Talk. I'm gonna read the definition. It says to talk over, to discuss, to communicate intimately. That's why it says commune upon your own bed, meaning you are thoroughly thinking about your actions. You are thoroughly doing what? It starts with E. Examining yourself. That's why it says commune upon your own bed. Alright? So that I know I know that's why y'all wanna you gotta look at the definitions. Alright? That's why these scriptures make us wise. When you don't know a word, make sure you look it up. Alright? Alright. Alright, so spinning off of this scripture, communing with your own with your own heart. We're gonna go through a few scriptures and you're gonna ask yourself, is this me? Is this stuff I deal with? Alright? Majority of these scriptures, every last one of us deal with these issues, all right? But this is it's not for you to raise your hand and say, I deal with it. No, it's for you to think, do I deal with this and what am I doing to overcome it? All right, let's go to Sirach 3 and 24. This is one of my favorite scriptures, all right? Because I need this. This is, uh, this is medicine to me. This is Sirach 3 and verse 24. Sirach chapter 3 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. Uh, who can stand up and tell us what that means? Brother Chris. Many are deceived by their own understanding. They come up with thoughts, questions, scriptures, and they go off what they think. 
No, that's not what I'm looking for. Brother, you go ahead, brother. No. Like, Stand up. You are caught up in your own opinions, stuff like that. You believe what you um, think. Okay, give me an example. Like, say the scripture says something, but you wanted to believe the other, uh, the opposite. Okay, okay. Anybody, go ahead, brother. Sam. Like when they battling stuff. Speak up. When they, when you battling things, you, you think about it. So the things that you think about may deceive you. When you know things get tough. All right, so he said things you battle with sex. Say, say, uh, standing. Say the things that you battle with. So let's make the example. For example, um, you talking to brother Afia, right? Right. And let's say y'all in mid conversation, he gets a phone call and he decides to step out and take that call with hatred towards your brother. So now, here comes the devil and says, "You see that that nigga disrespected you." Because y'all was over here having a serious conversation, and this nigga got the nerve to get up and go answer the cell phone. You see that? That's and now you got, now you got this spirit on you trying to say like, hey, that nigga hates you. You gotta watch your back around that brother. You know what I'm saying? It says, for many are deceived by their own vain opinion. As funny as that sounds, brother. As funny as it sounds, brothers and sisters battle with that on a daily basis. Brothers and sisters battle with stuff like that on a daily basis. But that's an example. You can take a seat. That's an example of people having a vain opinion. Nothing was there. Nothing's there at all. The brother literally just got a call from his wife and had to go answer the phone. But some brothers and sisters, they deal with that. So at this moment, just ask yourself, is that something I deal with? And if it is, you need to go before the most high. You need to seek the counsel. You need to study the scriptures to get over um, having vain opinions, having vain thoughts about people when nothing's even there. All right. And what do you do if you thought something was there? <laughs> you apply Matthew 18 and 15. You apply Matthew 18 and 15. Say you thought something was legitimately there. You don't just hold it in. Hold on, let me get a screen. Rock 20. You don't just hold it in to yourself. Uh, so Rock 20 and verse 2. This, this scripture right here is medicine if you have an evil thought towards people. Let me just show you what the scripture says. The book of Sirach, chapter 20 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. It is much better to reprove. So it's much easier to try to figure out what the situation is. Read. Than to be angry secretly. Than to do what? To be angry secretly. You see that? Because if that brother walked off on the phone and now you're mad at him. Is that going to help? Is that affecting that brother that walked off or is it affecting you? It's affecting you. You just you just cut your own self up for no reason. He don't even know what's going on. Now we have division in the body. Now, now we are not on one accord. But the scripture says it's better to reprove than to be angry secretly. Read. And he that confesses his fault uh -huh. shall be preserved from hurt. Right. And say the brother did do something wrong. When you confess it, you're preserved from hurt. Now you'll be forgiven. Now you can move on from that. But if you're angry secretly, that, that's, that's not good. It's not good to be angry, angered secretly. Because there's no solution when you do stuff in secret. Oh, oh, I'm glad you just said that. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. Exactly what the officer just said is this scripture right here. And do the same thing. Ask yourself, are you one of these people who want to be angry secretly and not get over what you're, what you're dealing with. Do you want to be one of those people? Let's read that. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. A fool have no delight in understanding. A fool have no delight in understanding. All right? Because a man of understanding would apply the scriptures and go to their brothers. All right? Read. But that his heart may discover itself. He's only caught up with what his heart is talking about. So if his heart says, hey, Forget that brother, forget that sister. It is what it is. This is how we're going to do it. He's fine with that. And he doesn't want to solve the problem. All right? Let's read it again from the top. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 2. Uh huh. A fool have no delight in wit and understanding. So it's talking about that brother, that sister. They don't ever want to get it right. They want to, you know, if there's a quarrel, if there's strife, if there's division, they want to keep it that way. Because they have no understanding, they have no delight. It does not please them to gain their brother or gain their sister. Read on. But that his heart 
may discover itself. That's all they worried about is themselves, themselves, themselves. What makes them feel right? Oh, I'm getting back at them for not talking to them. All right. Now ask yourself, is that something that you deal with personally? All right. Let's go to uh, verse seven. Proverbs chapter eighteen and verse seven. Uh huh. A fool's mouth is his destruction. Read that again. A fool's mouth is his destruction. A lot of brothers and a lot of sisters speak too much. And sometimes they show themselves who they are by their words. They say foolish thoughts. Some may think that they're better than somebody because they know more scriptures. All right? So they're going to, eventually it's going to come out because they talk too much and they may offend somebody. All right? Or the next man may, he may joke too much. He may joke too much and say something to offend somebody. And now that may make that person fall out of the truth. Or they, you know what, I don't want to come to this congregation because of this person. All right? Think about if that's you. If your mouth is an issue. And anybody would know if your mouth is an issue because it's happened to you before. All right? Let's read it all the way through. A fool's mouth is his destruction. Uh-huh. And his lips. Are the snare of his soul. Are the snare of his soul. That's his fault. His lips are his fault. All right? Let's go to verse 9. Verse 9. Uh-huh. He also that is slothful in his work. Read that again. He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. So, brothers with the slothful spirit, sisters with that slothful spirit, all right? There's a lot of quarrels, a lot of strife that can come from somebody being slothful. All right? Now, are you going to allow yourself to continue in that slothful spirit? Or are you going to, you know, actually consider yourself, think on your ways, and correct that? All right? Let's go to the next one. Let's go to verse 12. Verse 12. Uh-huh. Before destruction, the heart of man is hot. The heart, the heart of man is what? Is hot is hotty. All right, who can tell us what hot hotty means, brothers? By show of hands. The day you pull it, the definition. You got to go there for your center. Hottiness is uh, proud, arrogant, all right? Um, all about self. Exactly, exactly. All about self, prideful. A lot of brothers, especially sisters, sisters for the most part roll with that spirit, but brothers do too. All right, so examine yourself. Then that one, we're gonna actually read the definition. Of uh, of haughty, haughty, having a feeling or superiority that shows itself in a overbearing attitude. Related words: bossy, dominating, dominant, impudent, boisterous, cocky, vain, vain, glorious, conceited, egocentric. Uh, stuck up, self-complacent, self-loving, conceited. All right, here go another one. Having or displaying feelings or scorn for what is regarded as beneath oneself. Y'all see that? All right, so pride is sneaky, though. That's the thing about it. Pride is a spirit that can creep upon you. Some brothers and sisters deal with it at a higher level. But sometimes pride can sneak up on you when you least expect it, all right? And I, yeah, yeah, go ahead and read that all the way through, officer, because I like the end part on that. Verse yeah. 12. Oh, yeah, yeah. Proverbs 18 and verse 12. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. And before honor is humility, all right? It says that God resists the proud and give uh, mercy to the humble. All right, so we ought to we ought to examine ourselves. We ought to consider ourselves. Do we fit these characteristics? Do we go through these things? All right, let's go to uh, verse thirteen. Proverbs chapter eighteen and verse thirteen. Mm -hmm. He that answered a matter before he heard it, it is folly and shame unto him. So that's the person who jumps to conclusions. All right, the person who hears a matter, ooh ooh ooh, and starts gossiping. And they start jumping to conclusions. Now you're looking at your brother and sister differently than you did before without hearing the whole matter. All right? And it says that that person, it is folly and a shame unto him. A shame.